Hello friends. Happy Wednesday. Got my Wednesday basket pipe and I am smoking some Thanksgiving Day. We're getting there. I will have some after Thanksgiving Day thankfully, but not a lot. And I'm going to have to refill this for sure because I started smoking it and then I wanted to get a few pictures together for this video and you'll understand why. So, the Wednesday roadway ramble, not on the roadway, but in my basement videos, uh, usually it's just me blathering on about something and, and you know, I enjoy doing that. I, for some reason you enjoy hearing it um, or you wouldn't be watching. And I find it to be very therapeutic and a lot of fun. But, Today, I actually wanted to do something a little bit more structured because, uh, you know, Thanksgiving is tomorrow and I wanted to, to do something to kind of celebrate the fact that it's Thanksgiving and also give me an opportunity to wish all of you a uh, very happy, blessed and love-filled Thanksgiving. And then, um, by the way, I'm refilling the haunted bookshop as I, as I talk here. Uh, I saw that our friend Tamper Tantrum is having a uh, a gaw to celebrate, I believe it's his 400 sub uh, celebration, and I wanted to support that, and he's just looking for a story of something we're thankful for, which, you know, is good for the, good theme for the, the season, and I thought I'd take this opportunity to both talk a little bit about something I'm thankful for, but also... Uh, talk a bit about Thanksgiving and such. So this is not going to be quite the normal rambling. Hopefully you won't mind. Uh, so yes, Jeff Tamper Tantrum, link below. If you don't know him, you really should. He's uh, quite entertaining. I hope this lighter settles in. There we go. New flints takes a while to So, Jeff, um, Temper Tantrum, uh, is, is doing this call, and he's asked us to talk about something uh, that we're thankful for. And, boy, I could I could go on for hours, you know, and, and I think we all could go on for hours. And I, I think this year in particular, <laughs> that's a really important thing, you know. I'm tired of hearing people say, oh, 2020 this and 2020 that, I can't wait till 2020. Yeah, there was a lot of rough crap we all went through this year. I, I get it. But it wasn't without good. You know, it wasn't like nothing good happened all year. And I think we need to be thankful that there was some good. Um, so, so that's one thing. Oh, this is really being a problem. Hopefully that will settle down. So, you know, I'm, I'm not on that 2020 was on whole train. Um, yeah, there were some bad things, but. And of course, you know, I could talk about family, I could talk about friends, you know, all the things that, you, that come to mind as soon, as soon as somebody says, what do you think? You know, this whole list. And they're all important. And of course, I'm thankful for my YouTube friends, my, my, my YTPC family, uh, guys and gals that I can call on in times of need just to say, hey, I'm going through this, will you, will you say a few prayers for me? Uh, people that feel comfortable coming to me with that kind of request. Uh, a smaller group of people that I, that I feel comfortable calling up on the phone or, or, or sending an email to and saying, you know, I'm going through something rough. Can you, uh, can you talk to me for a bit? Um, not that that happens very often, but to know that those people are there, to know that I have that if, if I need it, that's, that's something I'm very thankful for. And then there's the sort of voyeuristic uh, world of the YTPC where I get to watch all these people interacting and sharing gifts and sharing experiences and, you know, 
such good vibes, to use a hippie term, <laughs> coming out of this community at a time when there aren't a lot of good vibes in the in the general world. And that's that's wonderful. That is really really something I'm very thankful for. That, that this provides me with a place that I can go to and get away from the nonsense. For that I am extremely thankful. But I have a little story I wanted to tell you that just happened. Um, and it's something else I'm thankful for. And it, it, it leads to something I'm thankful for. So, and to be honest, I don't know exactly how I'm going to end this story. I don't know exactly what the thing is that I'm thankful for. So, in true Wednesday ramble style, uh, you'll see this evolve as we go along. I'm just going to stop using that lighter because i gotta, I got to figure out what's going on with that, that flint. So, I'll be putting pictures in here as we, as we go along with this story. Um, you know, I live in a suburban neighborhood, and I've got a reasonably large plot uh, that my house is sitting on. Uh, it's not huge, it's not tiny, it, it's, it's big enough that um, and we have enough trees that I have a massive amount of leaves that I have to take care of every, every fall. And here you're seeing a picture of what the yard looked like after I took care of the leaves. I should have taken one from before, but I didn't. Uh, but you can see lots of trees and stuff, and there's a big oak tree that's right next to me as I'm taking this picture, uh, which really puts a lot of leaves out. So, you know, I, I, I have a lot to deal with. And the way I deal with that is I, I use a leaf blower and I blow it into piles. And this is a one pile that's just representing like maybe one eighth of the, the yard. Uh, that I've that I've put together, and then I've got this lawn vacuum that's shown in the in the picture there. It's a Craftsman lawn vacuum. I bought this probably 20 years ago, and I only run it once a year, and it's been it's been fabulous. It, it's really worked very very well. Um, so I use that to mulch up the leaves, and they go into that black bag on the back. Okay, there's a reason I'm telling you all this. <laughs> So once they go into the back bag, into the back, into the black bag, I will uh, take the bag off, walk over to the street, and I dump them into a pile. And here you see, uh, I think this is about an 80% uh, done pile right now. Uh, so you can see that the that is probably reduced to one third of its actual size because the leaves are chopped up. So you can imagine how big this thing, this pile of leaves would be if I didn't chop them up and then they would blow around and they'd wind up right back in my yard and other people's yards. Uh, it, it turns out that for reasons I don't fully understand, when you chop them up, they're less likely to blow around. I think it's probably because they have smaller surface area. Um, but anyway, yeah, this has worked for me for many years and this is the way I do it. And then the burrow comes around with one of those big vacuum trucks and they just suck everything up and those things suck the, the street clean, so they're very powerful uh, suction. And that's how I do my leaves. Okay, so why am I telling you this? Well, I did this on Saturday and Sunday, and, and was finished on Sunday. Uh, put everything away and was a happy man. Uh, it was really, you know, achy and you know, back hurt and everything else, but uh, it was good. I, I felt like I had done something. You know, I was alive. And I like that feeling. And so I went to bed that night happy. Woke up the next morning. Actually, I started vacation on Friday, but I've been working every day. It's, it's crazy. So on Monday, I had to work. Uh, I actually had a meeting that started at 10 o'clock in the morning and went till 1230 in the afternoon. And this was a mandatory thing. I, not mandatory, but I had to be there. Um, I had to uh, in, interact the whole time. I, I couldn't walk away from this meeting. So for two and a half hours, I was completely tied up. So as I'm sitting there in this meeting, about five minutes into it, I noticed that I did not have my wedding ring on. Now, I got married 22 years ago, and my wife put that ring on my finger 
and I'm old fashioned. I've taken it off exactly twice and both times it was for medical procedures where they just simply would not allow me to wear it. I argued with them, they said no, and I gave it to my wife to hold while I was getting surgery. And as soon as I came out, she put it back on my finger. And that, that's the only time this ring has ever been off. Um, so when I realized it wasn't on my finger, I started to panic. And you know, what, what could I do? I couldn't leave this meeting. I didn't want to say, oh, I lost my wedding ring. I got, you know, I, I had to stay in this meeting. I had to keep engaged. So I got my phone was sitting next to me. And I was able to send a text message to my wife saying, please check the bed because maybe my wedding ring fell off during the night. Because I couldn't imagine that I went to bed without wearing it. You know, not noticing it all that time. Well, it turns out it wasn't in the, in the bedding. So then I've got her, you know, I text message looking everywhere. And the meeting finally finishes, and I go upstairs, and cause I'm in the basement working. And she says, no, it's not anywhere in the house. I looked, and I thought, wow, I know what happened. As I am emptying that big black bag, I have to reach my hand up into it, my left hand, and drag the leaves out. And at some point as I'm doing this, my wedding ring must have slipped off. By the way, the leaf pickup is Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So as far as I know, at any minute, they're going to come and suck those leaves up into the, into the thing. And I'm convinced that my wedding ring is in there. Guys, I, I, I'm an odd person. Or maybe I'm not so odd. I don't know. But I'm a person that doesn't like to lose things. And I mean anything like a pen. If I've got a pen that I've been using every day for a while and then I can't find it, it bothers me. This really, really bothered me. And I went out with a, with a rake and a broom and I started moving that leaf pile uh, about, I don't know, two or three cupfuls of leaves at a time, pull them off the pile, spread them out on the street, move them over about three feet and then start on the next small piece of it spread it out on the street. I was frantic and so my wife came out and she said there's a place in Quaker Town which is about I don't know half an hour from here that rents a metal detector for forty dollars a day. I'm gonna go get it. And I said okay that you know, I don't think it'll work but sure. I had a metal detector when I was a kid and I never found anything with it. Um, I, I just didn't have a lot of confidence in this. Of course, my metal detector was a really cheap Radio Shack realistic. Uh, it might have even been a kit that I put together, I don't remember. So she goes off and gets this and comes back and she, you know, she talked to the guy. He told her how to do it. She, she told him what kind of ring it was and he showed her what settings to use and all. And this was a this was a fairly fancy version of a metal detector compared to what I had as a kid. My, my metal detector had a volume knob on it. This one actually had uh, sensitivity and different metals that it could, it could detect. So. so we put it on the settings he suggested and we start sweeping the leaf pile. And you know, we, get, we get a beep and I, I, my wife was doing the sweeping with the detector and I was doing the digging through the leaves. And the first beep, there was um, a piece of metal that was actually embedded in the in the, the asphalt. I have no idea what it is. It's just like a bent piece of metal that somehow got in there. And we sweeped a couple more times, and there was a beep that was that was really light, and we couldn't find it. And I think that might have just been some like piece of uh, like a foil wrapper or something that was mixed in with the leaves, because we we tried and we kept getting it, but it was very very light, and you know just. We, we had to leave that because there was just no way, nothing we could find. And then as we continued through the pile, uh, she got a very loud beep. And it was right up against the curb. And I dug down through the leaves and there was my wedding ring right up against the curb, right underneath the, the leaf pile. And I put it on and I was extremely happy and relieved. And, you know, first thing I did was I, I, I told my wife, Thank you. That was such a great idea. You had to go get the metal detector. I never would have thought of it. And she said, you, you told me to do it. 
what? <laughs> and apparently, I, I was really frantic. You know, I, I had no idea what I was doing, I guess. And I, I told her to go look up metal. I, didn't, I have no memory of that. So she did it. We, uh, we found it. We were both very happy about that. And, you know, my wife was wonderful the whole time. She's saying, you know, this is this is sad, but we were going to renew our vows on our 25th anniversary, and that's coming up in just a few years. We can go back to the same jewelry shop, and I'll get the same ring, and we'll have it blessed by a priest in Pittsburgh where we got married, and all, which was, you know, wonderful, and it did make me feel a little bit better. Uh, so she was really great, and then she got the, the detector and, and helped me uh, finally find it. So, you know, I was filled with... with thankfulness and gratitude uh, at this moment and of course the whole time I was praying you know so I thank God for it and you know, everything else and you know in the big picture this is a really minor thing you know there are people that are having you know significant health problems or their spouse are having significant health problems there there are people that have lost their jobs I know this is a tiny little thing it's a blip on the radar but in the moment to me it was very very significant and to have it all be resolved that, not, not easily, but surprisingly, you know, I, I was I was amazed that I was able to find it. Um, that was that was a wonderful feeling. And I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm getting to in terms of thankfulness is I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for the, the fact that that happened. I'm thankful to, to God for hearing my prayers. Uh, and I'm thankful that I have the ring back. But at a higher level, and this is where the rambling is, is starting to kick in, at a higher level, I'm just thankful that for my state in life, for the fact that I've got a loving wife that cares about me, for the fact that you know she knows me, she understands me, she, she can um, look past the fact that I'm a little bit out of my mind and stay st steady and and we work well together because there are times when she's a little bit out of her mind that I can be the, the steady stable person so I'm really thankful for that so, Jeff uh, good luck on your your go I hope it goes really well for you guys please check out Jeff's channel get into the contest he's got some great prizes uh, pipes and tampers you, 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 you can't lose uh, if you well, you could lose <laughs> you know what I mean it's it's well worth your time uh, Jeff I don't want to be entered in the contest I just did this as a as a show of support for you and your channel um, I, I appreciate what you're doing but I would rather somebody else uh, enjoy the, the Piper tamper uh, they're beautiful but I've got more than I can I can use right now so folks, thank you. Uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, be with friends and family. Screw the, the shutdown nonsense. Do what you want to do. Uh, life is too short. So with that, happy Thanksgiving to all. I will see you on Friday for Virtual Pipe Club. You all have a great rest of the week. And uh, take good care of yourselves. Goodbye now.